Hello everyone, this is Daniel Kim with Game Changer, and this is the beginning of a comprehensive series on how to code using a platform called Tinker. With most programming languages, you may have heard the statement, print, hello world, which is oftentimes the first task done. However, let's dive right into creating your first ever video game from beginning to end. We're going to create a virtual game tag, which is honestly pretty cool considering that physical tag isn't really possible during the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's start by creating this two-player game. After you register for Tinker, you go to My Projects and you can create a new project. And now you'll see that Block Coding is a section you can go to. And you can open a new blank Block Coding project. After you open up a blank Block Coding project, you're going to see this default actor in a blank stage. Now what I like to do before I start game creation is I like to delete the actor so I can start off with a blank slate. Like in any video game, Tag's going to need a background. For example, Super Mario Bros has Princess Peach's Castle, Super Smash Bros has Final Destination, and Street Fighter has the uh, Air Force Base. When you go to Settings and go to Add Backgrounds, there's a very selection of backgrounds you could choose from. And since Tag is an outdoors game, I'm going to choose the desert landscape. And like some games, you'll need two players to interact with each other. So I'm going to add two actors. You can add actors by going to add actors and clicking on the media library. And choose whichever actor you'd like. For this game, I think I'm going to go with Goblin for one. And then let's go to media library again and Little Knight for another. Like before, these actors come with a preset code, and I like to start off by removing it so I can work on a blank slate. Let's go to Little Knight, do the same for that. Now that we have both the Goblin and Little Knight actors, both completely cleared of code, we can now start on actually coding them ourselves. But first of all, you can go to the stage and move actors by clicking and dragging on them. I'll start off with an actor on each side of the stage. In this game of tag, we're going to be using a set of controls for each actor. For Goblin, we're going to go with the WASD controls. And for Little Knight, we're going to use the arrow keys. Since the player can move in four different directions, for each actor, we're going to use four different when key press blocks. Let's drag over four of these event handlers. Now that we have four different event handlers, one for each key, we can now start by modifying these white bubbles. These white bubbles are things you can modify in Tinker in order to change the code to the way you want it. By default, these are all set to up arrow, but we need WASD for Goblin. So let's change one of these to W, another to A, another to S, another to D. Now that we have set all the controls, we can actually start going to motion. If you go to one of these move 10 pixels blocks and move it over to the event handler, let's go with W first. It's going to actually connect like a puzzle piece. What movement does is exactly as it sounds. It says move 10 pixels. When W pressed, it will move 10 pixels. So let's add this move 10 pixels block to each one. Now that we have set all these movement blocks, what I like to try is actually playing it and see what happens. Right now I'm pressing the W key, I'm pressing the A key, S key, and then the D key. What you may have noticed is that it's actually all moving in the same direction. That's why we're gonna need to actually set the direction with a different block. In order to direct the actor in a certain direction, we're gonna want to drag over the point towards mouse pointer before each move 10 pixels. However, we don't want each key to move just towards the mouse pointer. We want them to actually be able to move in a certain direction based on which key is being pressed. So let's take W for example. We want W to mean you're moving up. So when the W key is pressed, we want it to point towards the top edge and move 10 pixels. Now we take the A key and go to left, 
S is down, so we want it to point towards the bottom. And then D is right, so we want it to point towards the right edge. Let's check out what actually happened after we did all this. Let's press the play button. Let's see. Now you see that when I press W, the actor can move it up. When I press A, it moves left. When I press S, it moves down. And B moves right. With these point towards blocks, we fixed the previous issue of the actor not moving in a certain direction we want them to. And now, once we play it, we can see that when you press W, it moves up the direction we want it to. A, it goes left. S, it goes down. And D, it goes right. But there's still one problem with this. The motion is laggy. It doesn't move smoothly like we would want it to. And that is because Tinker's when key press block checks the keyboard differently than how we want it. To fix this, we will use the repeat while block. Go to control and find repeat while. We could drag it over here. One thing I would like to point out is the C shape. In this C shape, you can actually drag over these blocks and put it inside the repeat while. And you drag it back to the control block. And we could just repeat this process for each one. Now, you see that we have this block that says repeat while false. What this means is whatever's inside this block will not actually occur. So what we actually need is going to in sensing. We want the repeat to occur when a certain key is pressed. So let's drag this and replace it for each false. And like before, we don't want them all to be the default of up arrow. So let's change these to match the key above them. So we'll set it to W for this one. And for A, we want to match the key to A. For S, we want to match it to S. And for D, we want to match it to D. Now, we have all the repeat while blocks prepared. So let's see what actually happens in game now. Notice how fast the actor is. It's quite an unplayable speed. We can change it by changing the value in the white bubble, and that will slow the actor down. So for these, I'm just going to set these all at four for now. So that's cool and all, but we actually want to be able to see them walking. So we can actually animate these actors to move as if they're actually walking. If we move these animate blocks to before each point towards edge block. For W, we expect the actor to move up. We want him to walk with his back towards us, so let's choose back walk. For A, we can just choose side walk to show that they're walking on the side. And we could do the same for D. So let's go to D, and we could animate sidewalk. For S, we're just going to want to see the front of the actor when he's walking down the screen. So we want to see front walk. Now that we have all the animation ready, we can actually save a lot of time by copying and pasting these over to Little Knight. So we could actually just drag each block over to the actor Little Knight. And it'll copy into the actor. Of course, we're going to have to do modifications afterwards, but for now, let's just drag all of these into the actor. Now, notice how we said before that we want arrow keys for Little Knight, but it says WASDP for the keys. So we can actually just modify these in the white bubbles. Instead of W, we can have up arrow. We're going to need to replace it for the key pressed as well. And then instead of A, we're going to want left arrow. Instead of S, we're going to want down arrow. Instead of D, we're going to want right arrow. Now with that, we have all the movement blocks ready to go. So we can actually press play and play both of the characters and full screen by pressing the arrows. That's it for this video. Next time we'll add something that will actually show who is it, as well as bonus effects like music and sound.
catch you in the next video.